LabVIEW also offers a structure called a flat sequence. And this can be drawn out similar to all the other structures. So one thing about a flat sequence is it kind of looks like a, an old school film reel. And that's kind of how it functions. So we can right click and we can add a case or add a frame after and draw this the size we want. So this runs very simpler. So we'll just call this A and we'll just call this B. So frame B will not run until frame A is, is done doing its operations. When we rerun this, um, our increment gets changed right away. So the code inside this frame is running. And this while loop is just holding us up. And frame B will not continue until the data hits this, this edge. And then showing that when we hit stop, the data passes. We have our indicator. The numeric uh, number two shows up and then frame B is waiting. So frame C is just waiting until just this last piece of data is entering to continue on. So if we hit stop, same thing happens. C gets incremented and waiting to end. That's why our end is zero. We'll stop frame C and finishing the process. So one thing to know which if you made it to this part of the video, um, you might get a little irritated. The the flat sequence is something that isn't really used much anymore. It, it's actually something that I never see until I'm working with a lot older generations of code. And it's kind of a, a little bit of a no-no in a lot of areas. So one of the, the ideas behind it is, so what this is doing is it's, it's being controlled by data flow. Well, lab view is controlled by data flow. This information right now, so this is data driven. So B won't continue until data from this, this numeric A and this Boolean A hit this frame and then B starts. But lab view as a language runs that way. So if I had to rebuild this code without this flat sequence structure, which we can do by right clicking and we can go to remove sequence. All I'd really have to do, and I know this is going to be bad wiring, but I don't really want to do a long video. And we'll, and we'll see the, the same, the same information. So I hit A to stop. It continues. And now that Boolean turns on, and then that numeric gets set. And now the numeric from B is waiting. Or frame case C is waiting until B is done. And now the endpoint and this Boolean C are waiting until I, I hit stop. So this is already uh, a better version than using a flat sequence. One of the only things um, I, I use a flat sequence for sometimes, and, and this is more, LabVIEW is a rapid prototyping tool. So sometimes you just want to build it quickly just to get a proof of concept out and then come back later and do necessary cleanups. So I will sometimes use a flat sequence when if I have just a whole bunch of inputs that are all coming from different computers or different systems and I need them on a log file so I might have a little log VI that just says hey like just log data and this is more debug data so I just something uh, to s let anyone know who's looking at my code what this is doing so I would run all my inputs in here and then I would say okay what what is this actually doing where is it in the system so i'll put something like debug log in the sequence and i'll log some data but a sub vi and like i said we'll talk about this later we'll do the exact same thing but sometimes if my vi i'm not really sure which way i want to build it and i'm just i'm playing around with you know different i don't know like let's say we're playing around with different 
multiple different equations and there's all kinds of stuff we need to to test first a flat sequence can be used to run in a bunch of inputs kind of test your system out is this little you know sub vi or whatever it's doing working correctly and then okay if it is then yeah we can start to compress it to different sub vi's and make it much more easy to read and just overall better to use so I hope this video was helpful but overall I mean stay away from flat sequences but I just wanted to get the information out there in case you run into them because oftentimes you will at one point